the fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up until you reach the top of Shut Fuck Mountain where there are no more fuck ups to shut. Hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my cowboy Joe Boo and Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, literally does not work. You know... <clears throat> There is some good news. We got nowhere to go but up. It, it can't get much worse than where we are right now. We are literally in hell. And it can't get worse than this. We just literally had. I, I, want, I want you guys to understand this. I have been a Dallas Cowboy fan since I was a little kid looking up to my dad, my dad, who's still a cowboy fan to this day, 87 years old. I have seen so much in my time here. I remember the one in 15 season that first year after Jerry Jones fired the only coach that I knew Tom Landry where the Cowboys got one win, and that was over the Washington Redskins. I have seen that team build up, become a three-time Super Bowl champion, and then go through the hard years, hard 30 years since then. And no time since that 1-15 year season did the Dallas Cowboys lay a freaking egg or a pile of shit like they did yesterday. That is the worst loss under Jerry Jones. And you know what? I'm glad it happened on his birthday. I am so ecstatic that it happened on his birthday. For him to be sitting there on his birthday to see what he has raised. We can go through this. This whole thing, let, let's be clear here. This goes on nobody but Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones. That's it. This is the guy who could have paid CeeDee Lamb last year. And Dak Prescott, for that matter, and had better deals. And with the money saved, used that for bringing other players. This is the guy, him and his son, Catboy, that literally say, we are going to do more with less. You know, I've got all kinds of skills. I can build just about anything. But if you want me to build a house... And you're bringing me rotted two by fours that have been out in the weather, you know, or twisted two by fours that are warped crooked like my elbow. The house I'm going to build is not going to be real good. You got to have the materials to build anything. And the Jones's whole thing of we're going to pay a couple of guys that are going to sell our jerseys and bring excitement the sizzle, and then we're going to go through and we're going to be bottom feeders. Don't You can be pissed off at Dak and CD and Mike McCarthy and all you want, but take a look at what this team has been doing 
spending the least amount of money since Dak Prescott got there in 2016. I ask you, what is the biggest free agent signing or biggest move they made? They made one, which was Amari Cooper, which saved a three and five season. So I guess you could say there's hope. You could see, well, damn, that actually worked. You mean actually having a legitimate receiver brought in will actually make the offense work better? And mind you, we had a running game then. We have the worst running game in the NFL. It was Jerry Jones who said, you know what? Let's take a fourth round pick that could have been one of the young stud running backs that were out there this year. And let's spend $5.3 million for Trey Lance to be sitting on the bench. But we don't have money. We don't have money to pay a Derrick Henry that's $8 million. Because, see, you know, it's one thing to give up a draft pick, and it's another thing to give up money. You did both for Trey Lance as an experiment, as leverage, or maybe to create a buzz. And as I'm sitting here, in some regard, I, I, I'm, I'm upset because, I mean, literally, I remember rolling over at 2.38 this morning and looking at the clock and not being able to go back to sleep. And I kept looking at the clock, just rolling up. Okay, I'm going to go back to sleep. And never went back. I, I started to get up and come down and do a, a video. But I said, no, I'm not going to do that because Jerry Jones is not worth that time for me to get up out of bed, get dressed, come down here and shoot a video, even though I'm doing nothing because I can't sleep because of how shitty we literally played at home. But, you know, I'm sitting here watching that game. And some things that really are red flags to the whole thing. You know, you want to believe in a relationship because that's what I'm in. I'm in a relationship with the Cowboys. I'm in a relationship, and, and because I am loyal, I don't run at the first sign of, of trouble. And maybe that's my fatal flaw that I'm sticking with Jerry freaking Jones, Stephen Jones, and the Dallas Cowboys for as long as I have. I'm in an abusive relationship. But I'm sitting here, the Palace in Dallas, the AT&T Stadium, and during this game, they're announcing the Grand Prix that Jerry Jones has brought here. The Grand Prix. I, and, and, well, I'm sure that's great for the city, bringing in more revenue for the city and excitement and stuff and, you know, and, and everything else. But I'm sitting here thinking, what does that have to do with the Dallas Cowboys and my team trying to get a win on the Lions? Why aren't we focusing on winning a game with the Lions as opposed to the Grand Prix? And then at that moment with DMV here, we start talking about, damn, Grand Prix. You know, it's like DMV said exactly this. Jerry Jones doesn't need the Cowboys to be good to continue to make money because of all the other things that he does. Because we got the Grand Prix. He had World Cup soccer there. He's got the Tysons and uh, what's his name? Jake uh, Paul fight that's there. He's had wrestling mania. He's had, you know, the deals with Mexico, basically to make Mexico America's team too. He's got the star facility where he's got Keurig Pepsi that, you know, is leased out one of the buildings there at the star. So, you know, the Cowboys are just a sideshow. I don't belittle him for wanting to do all of these encompassing things, being the jack of all sports trades. But see, you're not mastering this one. You can't be 82 years old and working on the Grand Prix, running a mom and pop shop for an NFL team, talking about as you fly in with your helicopter in the middle of practice, talking about how we have to do more with less. It's all about the show for Jerry. And, you know, in the end, clicks 
another point we brought up with DMV here. What's crazy is when the Cowboys win, you know, if I'm doing my live stream, Cowboys are winning, the views go down. Views go down. Cowboys start losing, it picks up. The Cowboys get embarrassed, oh, it goes through the roof. You look at every show from first take, uh, you know, first things first, uh, you know, if, if Undisputed was still there, hell, it might resurrect just for the day. They're all talking about what? Jerry Jones? Jerry Jones's birthday, Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and getting Molly Watt. Everybody is getting paid because the Cowboys look like shit. The problem is they always tell you trust the process. Trust the process. We know what we're doing. Well, you sometimes find a Brandon Aubrey from USFL. Sometimes you get lightning in a bottle. The Cowboys have made a living on thinking we can just get aging players, cast-offs, guys from other leagues, and we can build a championship team. We're smarter than everybody else. Oh, and we're going to mismanage the cap because we don't know what the hell we're doing because Stephen Jones is my son who hired a guy who was a trainer for servers for Marketplace Grill, and we put him in for, you know, 20 years of working here, and so now learning from Stephen Jones, he understands the cap. He understands the cap. And when we turn around and we have, and, and trust me, you nobody... Nobody wins in the NFL by being cheap. The Cowboys literally feel like the Arizona Cardinals when they first moved to Arizona with Bill Bidwell, who literally was kind of like, we're not going to spend any money on players. We're going to do the absolute minimum, and we're going to take the money from the NFL, and, and just that's all we're going to do. When you make... Business decisions like Derrick Henry at $8 million. And I know people are sick and tired of seeing, hearing me say that. I don't care if you put Joe Montana out here right now in his prime, in his heyday, with what you are putting on the field without any kind of running game, you will lose. Understand you had guys like Roger Craig, who was the first guy to have a 1,000 yards receiving and rushing to go along with Joe Montana. You had Jerry Rice to go along with Joe Montana. You had the San Francisco's defense that was great at shutting people down. You had a dynamic tight end in Dwight Clark. And it pains me to give credit to the 49ers as much as I hate them. We are in hell now. We are about as dysfunctional as we can be, and we have literally been exactly what Jerry Jones put on the field. We're going to do more with less, but we're doing less with less, which is the way it works out. Michael Irvin, in the moment after the loss. Even though it's the last few minutes of the game, it's not worth watching. I've seen enough of this. I've seen enough of it. I don't know what you want to call this, but I've seen enough of it already to know. Wow. Those guys, the Dallas Cowboys today played like they had vacation on their mind. Like they know they have the bye week coming up, and they've already taken the bye week off because they have two weeks off. Because that shit was an off day. That certainly wasn't anything. I'm reminded here, though, a lot of what Coach told me, and I, I told you guys about this, the focus and how hard it is to have guys focus going into the bye week. 
how tough it is. And it looks like that's what Cowboys, they've already planned their offseason. The offseason is planned, or at least their, their, their off week was planned. I hope that Ferrodian slip that I just had is not an indication of the kind of year that this team is going to have when I just said they already have their offseason plan. Because the way they played today, it does seem like they already have their offseason plan and they know it won't be in playoffs. Because what I saw today, I see I, it's going to be very difficult for this team to try to line up and win nine games. You could be looking at right now from what you see is team three and three right now, or uh, one of those eight and nine, nine and eight seasons. If, if we get a few breaks, maybe you could find a 10 somewhere in there, but man, that's going to be a, what I just saw, that's going to be a tough task, you know. It, if offense is not clicking, defense certainly can't hold anybody down. I don't even know the numbers until I'm waiting them to finish and get the packet, but I guarantee you they had at least 10, 10 what they call explosive run plays. Played 10 runs of over at least 10 yards, and probably another two, 10 passes over 20 yards. A run over 10 yards, a pass over 20 yards, they call those explosive plays. They had a gang of Jared Goff, 18 for 25, 318 yards, 158 pass rating. That's perfect. That's a perfect game. They were able to run the ball, throw the ball, do whatever you want with the ball, just whatever you want on our defense. There have been a lot of people at the top of the year talked about the pressure. That's on Mike McCarthy. I do agree that there's some pressure on the coaching staff and on the coaches over there. But right now, that pressure isn't squarely on the shoulder of Mike McCarthy. It has another Mike in there helping it, and that's Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer. With that defense looking like it looks, Dan Quinn. Look like a genius. Lost today to Baltimore. Got Washington looking like they look. This does not look good. I know, I know you don't have all your players, and I know all the guys are there. Mike Zimmer, Mike got. I mean, me and Zimmer is like this. Like this. That's my guy. But I'm telling you right here, right now, this is a record. This, this, this has to come up. Somebody has to start talking about this. The difference and the, the, the difference they made on that defense and the difference it's making on that defense. You got they gotta figure something out, they gotta figure something out real fast. Or we're gonna be sitting here saying, what? We just had an eight or nine season, or possibly a nine eight season, and you missed the playoffs. Playoff playoffs? Don't talk don't about playoffs. That. Are you that kidding me? Like that. Playoffs? That certainly misses some throws. I, I, I found the glimpse of happiness one time because I saw him at TD talking on the sideline. I said, uh oh, that could be a spark. But it was nothing but a fizzle. Just a little bit of fizzle, fizzle right down. There was no comeback in this group. And I think in order to have any chance at winning, they have to play a perfect game. They have to play a perfect game. It has to be the perfect game. And right now, the Cowboys, with all the turnovers. They ain't playing. Okay. You get the gist of this. People, here's the bottom line with the Cowboys, okay? The bottom line is the same issues we have had in the playoffs. The same issues. Running the football and stopping the run. We don't do either of them. We have gotten even worse at running the football because Jerry Jones, excuse me, because Jerry Jones has literally just said, it's okay. We don't need to be able to run the football. Don't need to. 
We had 53 yards, which was basically garbage time. Your lead back had 25 yards rushing the football, and they rushed for 171 yards. The Cowboys right now are so one-dimensional. Nobody respects your run. Nobody respects your run. Period. Period. And when they don't respect your run, they're teeing off to get your quarterback, which is why he gets sacked four times. And when they're teeing off on the quarterback because they're not worried about stopping the run, you got coverage, double coverage. And when you really only have one game-changing wide receiver, you double cover him. People will say, he's holding on to the ball. Why isn't he throwing the football? Because there's no place to throw the football. Every single pass you see, every single catch, they're pretty much as somebody draped all over the receivers because you can't run the football. Because you only have one target. You can't stretch the field. And that is a recipe for disaster. And it all goes back to this guy right here. 47 to 9. An absolute destruction of the Cowboys on Jerry Jones' birthday. So, Jerry, what happened? This was a, a shocker. Uh, I thought we would do a lot of things better in that football game, and I and, uh, think we can. We just didn't do them out there today. Concerning, uh, I'm not a guy to hit, hit the panic button. Um, I, I get to have the ball in my hands, I get to lead this offense, I get to lead this team. Hard for me to say that. What would it take you to evaluate making a head coaching change in season? Oh, I haven't even uh, considered that. I'm not considering that. Just well, so you're clear. I'm but, not considering that. But you've done it Don't, once I, before. I wouldn't be a hypothetical in that matter. Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you? Yes, okay, we do well, think I'm you're an idiot. hypothetical with you about when I'd consider coaching change in light of the timing we're sitting here with. I'm not at all. We do think you're right. So that's a definitive answer. It was his birthday yesterday. It it was also the Cowboys bye week here, which might have been one of the reasons that you bring up the question if you're going to make a change. And sometimes it makes sense to do it in that circumstance. But Jerry Jones says he was shocked by what he saw yesterday. Were you, Dan Orlovsky, shocked? No, the, the Cowboys lost at home by 40 and the most outrageous thing was Jerry Jones saying he was shocked by what happened yesterday. Why? If anyone knows football and has paid any attention to these two teams this season, you saw how this game was going to go. That's why it was easy to pick the Lions and pick the Lions one-sided. The Cowboys do nothing well offensively outside of the quarterback to CeeDee Lamb occasionally making plays. They can't protect. They can't run the football. In the last two weeks that have taken points off the board, Mm -hmm. the Lions are by far the more dominant football team. And for Jerry Jones, I'm being legit here. To sit there and say that what he saw was shocking tells me that he has no pulse. He, no the clue. Field. The pieces, the chess pieces, if Greeny, you will. Uh, yeah. When this team got boat raced by the Packers yeah. in the playoffs last year, for them to run it back and to think that this was going to be a playoff football team talent-wise tells me that they've completely lost vision of what's needed to win in the NFL. Well, so let, let's actually uh, illustrate that. Cindy, can we put up A23? Going back to that game against the Packers, the Cowboys have played four home games, starting with that one. So that one and then the three this year. Oh, my year. gosh. Look at that total. Look at the way they have been dominated at home. They've allowed 167 points mm. in four home games. They've been outscored by 82 points in that span. That's an average of 20.5. I'm not very good at that, but even I can figure out they're losing by an average of 20.5 points per game in their last four home games. He's talking about the players. Who are you talking about watching that game? Well, I mean, I, I knew going into this game that it was going to be an ass whipping. That's what I said the day understanding before. Of football. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This was going to be the biggest mismatch of the year in, on the coaching thing. Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions against Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. I, uh, it was going to be, Dano, it was going to be like you playing chess against Bobby Fischer. <laughs> well, it's not going to end well. And so you knew it was going to be I a take mismatch. A shot <laughs> and, and it was like, why? Me, every, every bit of it. By the way, Gritty, they never punted. 
Detroit never punted in this game. Yeah. Like, you think maybe, schemed, yes, the, the, they're not as physical as Detroit. That was going to be a given. But they got, but you're getting out schemed any way possible. They did exactly what they wanted to do to you. And to me, that's coaching as well. And it's not just on the players. The coaches need to start looking back like, hey, it ain't okay just to play three weeks. It right. ain't okay to play match freaking coverage. Right. Like, you got to you got to do something, and we saw it in fight than I was because that defense still stunk in that game. Yep. So to me, this this defense has been atrocious, and I get it. You're without Micah Parsons yep. and Lawrence, and you know what? That shows they can't cover your butt up. They're not there to it cover also your tells, butt up. It shows you the deficiency of the, the roster. That the, those two guys matter. They're great players. They matter that much. So if, if the question is, was it the players yeah, or do. was it the coaches? What we've demonstrated here is the answer is yes. Both. <laughs> that brings us to the next point. D. Wood, what was your big picture take as you watched that game? Uh, <clears throat> Grinny, I don't, I don't say this lightly, and Rex and Dano know what I'm about to say is uh, it's kind of it's a big deal. Dallas Cowboys are soft. Mm. And for me yeah. to use the word soft, you're basically attacking oh. players' manhood yep. on mm. the field. And if you look at the way the Dallas Cowboys have played, I always say the game of football is very simple, okay? You block, you tackle, throw, pitch, catch, all that type of stuff. If you can't win in the trenches, you have no shot at winning in the National Football League. I have anyone, anyone, go look at the film. Just watch the game and just watch what goes on in the trenches with the Dallas Cowboys. They can't move anybody up front on offense and on scrimmage. I, and, and on offense... Look, we're seeing all these guys, guys oh. coming free right up the middle on the offensive line. So, again, these problems, we can talk about coaching and all these type of things, but at the end of the day, these guys are soft. That's the bottom line. No scheme is going to correct what's ailing the Dallas Cowboys right now. Mm -hmm. I, it sure as hell would help, though. This hey, by the way, um, D. Wood, I agree with you, except that number six – that poor guy, that safety, yeah. Yeah. Wilson, Wilson yeah. that dude ain't soft. Yeah. Like, holy cow. But that poor guy's got to go one-on-one, -on -one, make tackles against running backs, yeah. and he sticks his face in there. But the rest of them, it's like, I get you. The guys up front, linebackers, the D-line the, 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 the and the linebacking core, they were getting manhandled in that game. So I, 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 let me chime in with what I think. And look. Everything all of you have said I agree with, and on a day like this, there is more than enough blame to go around. That's one of the worst days that any team has had enough. in recent months. Enough. I, I just can't do any more of it. I, I just can't do any more of it. Nowhere to go but up. That's, that's, that's what we got. Nowhere to go but up. It sucks. The Cowboys, they suck. They stink. I, I don't know how else I can put it. We just do. And we got... Two weeks to play the 49ers. We got two weeks for the Cowboys to decide if they're going to try and salvage the season, and that is to make some moves or just let this thing crash and burn. We're at crossroads right now, and uh, we'll have more to talk about with that elsewhere. I think this pity party has gone on long enough. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. We'll be doing the uh, Monday night game tonight, um, and I'm sure it'll be full of trolls in here. It'll be here to laugh at us. I'll see you guys soon. Peace out. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter,